So here's a typical chroma key image that was produced without much care and attention to the setup. The model is casting a huge shadow on the background, which is not really lit, it's dark green. A shadow on the screen is really bad for the chroma key isolation, because you know what? The darker the tone, the less saturation you get. It means that the shadow is even less green than the whole background, because as it gets darker, it gets more neutral. We won't be able to select it automatically. I can prove it easily by accessing the color range command. When I click around, the background gets selected pretty smoothly, but as I start clicking on the shadow area, the guy gets selected as well. So really, it's no good, but I'll play a little trick here. I'll just click on the background a few times with the magic wand, and then just remove the shadow with the normal brush. Let's pretend it wasn't there in the first place. The background is more or less green now, and the guy is not green, which is kinda lucky, he stands so close to the background that it's a miracle that he hasn't caught all the green reflexes on his clothes. Now it's a good time to test my chroma key isolation action. Let's just run it and then see what it does. I'll go back in history to the step just before the action has started executing commands. First thing it does is convert the image to the lab mode. That's because there's a channel in the lab mode that contains all the information for the green color. It's the A channel. The action duplicates it so that it can be used later and converts the image back to RGB mode. Nothing has changed so far, we just have one of the lab channels available in RGB mode. Then we get the background layer copied and the A channel is applied to it. This is the first sketch of our future isolation mask. Then it applies an image once again. This time it applies the A channel image on top of itself, but inverted, and the blending mode is divide. In the divide blending mode, pixel values get divided with each other, and it lets us brighten the guy while keeping the background gray. That's because in the A channel, everything that is green is dark and the rest is neutral gray. The divide blending mode turns neutral gray into white, and this is how we get this result. But that's not good enough, so we'll do some more blending. It copies the layer and fills it with white solid color in the exclusion blending mode. Now that's better. Merge this down and make one more copy, and fill it with solid color again. This time it's 50% gray and the blending mode is divide. We're actually close to a good mask. Now we get the levels window, where some sliders are moved to achieve a black silhouette on a white background. This step can be set so that it requires user input if that's necessary, but I usually manage to get a good mask automatically. The last thing is to invert the image so that we get a black background and a white guy silhouette. That's it. This is the mask that is then applied to the layer and the background gets filled with white. It doesn't have to be white, it can be any color, because this is the great advantage of the chroma key technique. You can change the background to any color. What this action does is get rid of the green while preserving the image opacity. Overall, this is a quick method that allows you to replace the green background with white or whatever color you need. But the result is not perfect. There might be some green reflexes left, and your isolation might suffer because of that. When the model stands too close to the screen, it's highly likely that you'll encounter the notorious green spill. You can access the hue saturation window Find the greens in the dropout menu and decrease saturation to minus 100 to get rid of all the green color that's left, but that won't help if your mask is torn. Also, if you use the level sliders too much, it will affect the edges of your mask, it will get you a sharp edge. You can blur it by using some filter, like the Gaussian blur on the mask, and you might also need to work on your mask with a black and white brush to make sure there are no holes. Sounds like a lot of work for something as simple as isolation. I don't see a reason why this guy couldn't be shot on a white background instead, if white is what we need in the end. Chroma key allows some pretty cool things to be done, like isolating hair perfectly, if you tweak your mask well enough. But when you apply it to the catalogs, it's more troublesome than just shooting on a plain grey background. In catalog retouching we get to work with all kinds of colored items, there are green clothes in the market, and the chroma key isolation will just rip them apart. Automatic isolation can be done more easily than that on any uniform plain background, 
and green reflexes do not look great on images anyway. So even if it sounds like a great idea when you hear about it for the first time, actually dealing with the chroma key images can be a rather discouraging experience. Personally, I dislike it so much that it's hard to imagine I could voluntarily agree to work with it at all. Not because I can't, because it makes things so much easier if you shoot on the background of the same color and tone to what you desire in the end. There is no need to reinvent the wheel here. Let's do some more testing of my chroma key isolation action. This guy is a bit better than the previous guy, at least the green screen is well lit. But if I zoom in, you'll see that there are some green color casts on his hand. When I run the action, it recognizes this green reflex as a part of the chroma key screen and makes a hole in the guy's hand. I don't see why a white background couldn't have been used instead. The last image is a kid standing on a stool. The stool is not green, so it doesn't get affected so much. If you look closely at the bottom edge of the dress, you'll see that the action took care of the transparency as well. If I change the background to black, you'll be able to see through the lace. But there is still an unpleasant green tint around most edges, 